You're watching Dad vs. CPS. Thanks for tuning in. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you better hit that bell because things are about to get real interesting. How's it going everybody? You're watching Dad vs. CPS. Welcome to my channel. I'm back. <laughs> How's it going everybody? Well, alright, so... All right, so you'll probably want to know where I've been all this time, right? Well, let me give you a little backstory first to tell you why I'm reopening my channel, why I'm starting to want the need to post, okay? Why haven't I done that in the first place? Why did I stop? All right, <clears throat> in February of 2022, February 13th, okay? I experienced one of the most horrible things that could happen to anybody. Ariana's mom, she passed away, right? She was murdered, she was shot three times, she was shot. She was shot in the face, she was shot in her chest, and she was shot in her shoulder. Okay, so that, on its own, is a lot. It really is. My world, my world ended inside. It was a lot. It's too much. Right? Then they put a story out there that, you know, that it was her baby daddy, her other one, the father of the, of the most littlest one, right? And they sold that story, okay? But the truth is, is that nobody saw him do that. Nobody saw him shoot her. Nobody saw him shoot himself in the end, as they say he did. Even though he was surrounded and all that. And that is a whole nother story, okay, on its own that I don't want to talk about right now, okay. But I don't believe he did it, okay. That's all I'm going to say for right now, okay. But that is the reason why. I stopped posting. I couldn't imagine ever in my life that Melissa would be gone. She wasn't perfect, you know, but she was a damn good mom. T to me, she was. myself I'm gonna stop I don't care about the channel no more I don't want to post the wrong thing so I just stopped posting you know I didn't know what to do I told myself I was gonna cry. But you know what? This is my damn channel. You know what? It hurts. And. Well. I guess it kinda helps show you that even two years later, it still hurts to lose someone. My channel was very important to me. It was. Helping others is what I do best. I don't care about money. I don't charge people. I'm not an attorney. I don't practice law and all that nonsense. Okay? I know what's right and I know what's wrong. 
And for me to come across people, so many people that have gone through the same things that I have gone through, for me to charge them <laughs> is wrong, morally, okay? Because I'm not into that profession, okay? Now I admit, okay, I have learned a lot, okay? To the point to where I can make a CPS worker stand down, okay? That I will show the court that I will remove them of their immunity and solely on their own actions that they have done the fear of going to jail that alone they will give their kid back okay and that is how I have built my method of strategy okay because you can go on and on and on and on, and on fighting in court and all this and that and filing documents and you'll never get anywhere okay once you prove that what they did was wrong okay if you can prove to the court that they acted in malice okay and that means they're doing this maliciously okay they're not acting in accordance with the law uh, what the law actually says and how they can remove children and, and all that okay that they acted in bad faith okay that they are acting outside the scope of their authority okay if you can do that okay by showing the court what they did and and then you can show the law what it clearly states and how they can remove children okay then there is no more qualified immunity okay because they only have qualified immunity if they can prove to the court, and, and this is how they do it, if they can just say to the judge, okay, that, well, Your Honor, I did this in, 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 in you know, while I was uh, in my duties and, and these the responsibilities that I held as, as my job, uh, um, and I, I, I thought that what I was doing was the right thing, and because of that, I, I'm protected, you know, by qualified immunity. She knows that, and he knows that, okay. Okay, and, and what can you say? Right, because you haven't studied your case, you haven't asked the right questions, you haven't directed the attention off of you, because it's all on you, right? You got to put the spotlight on them, okay? What's well, a matter of fact, they're breaking the law, and here's the law, and here's how they did it, right? Remember the day they removed your kids? Remember that day? Would you like to testify under the penalty of perjury? Just exactly what you felt the need was the the reason to remove your children, that's how you go about it, okay? After removal is an adversary hearing, okay? That is the day that you challenge that hearing, okay? Because I have learned a lot, okay? So I just wanted to bring a little bit more of what kind of stuff that I, you know, have been learning. Have I still been doing helping people? Have I been doing that, you know, this entire time? I really, I've kind of just been me, you know, I'm not perfect, okay, my life went to hell when Melissa got, and she got shot, right, I was there on his mom, she wasn't my girlfriend, she wasn't my wife, but you know what? She was a best friend of me. We talked all the time, every day. Right. And so that's why I've been gone. Okay. I think I might have helped one person. Right. And this happened to Melissa when she passed away in February 2022. I want to say in October. Months later. I couldn't even do it. I don't know how I did it. Somebody reached out to me in Victoria, Texas, right? And it was a father. And they reached out to me on YouTube and they said, Michael, you're the one. You're the one that's going to save my daughter. It's only going to be you. I don't want the attorney. And, and I just, I told him, you know, what had just happened to me, what I was experiencing, that I was in no, you know, shape. You know, in my mind, to even help anyone. 
I didn't know that if I could, right? That if I wanted to, you know, and I'm sorry to say that, but I just didn't have, in Spanish, they call it animo, right? You know, the will to do it. <laughs> I just, I told him, I'm look, man, I, this is what happened in my life right now. And so many people are reaching out to me, and I've just, I don't want to tell them anything. I just ignore it. You know? I don't know why I even started conversating with him. Maybe at that moment, I saw him in a situation where I had not seen anyone come to me this way. Where the, for one of the very first times in my life, someone who had just had their kids removed, or his daughter, right, had just reached out to me. And then this time, okay, I actually knew what to do. The process and everything. Okay. And so I took it, right? Maybe I did it because it would get my mind off of things. You know, maybe I did it because I wouldn't be sad thinking. I, w I would be doing things that I was doing. Because I couldn't do my YouTube channel, I told his father, you know what, I I'm, I can't I can't post anything right now. I want to try something different. I mean, I want to try try something different, right? So what I did was a little bit of backstory of what I did behind the scenes now, so that y'all know what <laughs> at least what I did, right? Okay, so. I told him, he's, he's from Victoria, Texas, right, his father, and I told him, look, first of all, before you come pick me up, because he wanted to come pick me up, right, miles and hours away, and he did, and he drove down here, right, and in Demi County, and he picked me up, and, you know, I took off with him, and I stayed there 10 days in 10 days okay but before those 10 days started I told him look show me that you have the will to even help yourself help me help you by the time you get here I need for you to get all these documents okay and get as many as you can but focus on these three when they remove children in Texas a child okay it's it, it's the very beginning of the case is started by a petition okay a petition is a request from the court okay they are asking the court to grant an order of something and in this case for an order appointing managing conservatorship right they can title it different other things right uh, right order for removal right uh, for exertion circumstances or whatever it is they're saying, right? But in this case, they put a petition to appoint temporary managing conservatorship of a child, right? And it has to, along with that, be filed with an affidavit that's in support of the petition. Okay, that petition is filed by the caseworker. Okay, the caseworker has to swear under penalty of perjury and by oath and affirmation that whatever allegations she's stating. Okay, that she has verified as true, right? And all that good stuff, right? Well, is it? Okay. Sometimes it's an emergency, sometimes it's not. In this case, they weren't saying that it that, that it really was, right? But because, I mean, if it's really an emergency, then, I mean, if it's so much of an emergency that uh, the, the caseworker has a time enough to write an affidavit and, and take it to the attorney and the attorney has enough time to file a petition and to draft an order for removal <laughs> i mean come you know what i'm saying like it, it but that one but they did it you know you know and so along with that so okay I, looper I, I, I tell looper it's the father right i tell him look get the petition get the affidavit and get the order that was granted right you know, there's there's probably more documents. I don't know. 
But those are the ones that I want to see because I've learned in my experience helping people that that's the main day that you want to focus on. Okay? I need to know what they wrote in the petition. Okay? Because I need to uh, challenge it. Right? We need to uh, validate everything that they said. Okay? The affidavit, we need to destroy it. Okay? And the entire credibility on the caseworker has to be destroyed. Okay? Everything that she has said in that document. It's questionable. If it's not true, then it is. Okay? It's a lie. Right? Surely they're not lying. Right? Well, let's see. Right? So I asked them to get those documents. Right? Now, everything that I was doing with, with his consent, I didn't charge him nothing. Okay? As I don't charge anyone for anything. Uh, I always say, you know, I mean, help those, you know, doing to others. Right? Help me help you, right? You see something I might need? Well, help me, right? I'm not asking for anything, you know? But someone asking me for help, you know? Just consideration is all, you know, is, is all that really matters to me. You know, maybe one day I'll win my big hotshot case. <laughs> maybe this is why I'm starting my channel again. I don't know, okay? But anyways, so he did. He did, and he went ahead and got the and got the files. Right. Um, when I got there, I started, you know, my thing. You know, started reading the documents and started, you know, learning his case. And okay, I filed three documents for him. Right, I helped e-file them for him. Okay, and I tried something different. For the first time, I'm going to tell you the secret, right, how we did it. Because maybe, perhaps, this might help others, okay? I don't know if there's another me like me out there, okay? But I told him, you know what, let's try something different. Why don't we go ahead and and make it appear as if, as if I'm you. But when you really get there, you're going to be you and you got to do everything, okay? Because every time that I had, you know been somewhere and they saw me and they always made it an issue he can't represent you blah blah blah, blah. and i know that i could and i could probably do all the documents to file you know and, and actually represent someone i probably could right and i know i can right because there's enough law out there to support that i could do this right uh, power of attorney attorney in fact right friend of the court <laughs> and there, there's so many ways that someone could actually help someone right and yeah, those are all legal terms right that the judge knows Okay, but you know what? Ultimately, they they would know that I'm the one that knows everything, and not the father, and not the mother, right? Right. So they were scared of me, right? So why not make them afraid of the father, <laughs> right? And it just occurred to me one time, and I was like, man, call the courthouse, right? And he calls the courthouse, right? And so, you know, uh, when he when he's Con the courthouse, he's like, he gives me the phone, right? He's like, yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, well, what I do? He's like, pretend you're me. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I'm like, uh, I can't pretend that I'm you. I'm not gonna say, you know, but but I mean, you know what? I'll speak for you. <laughs> do you give me permission? <laughs> right? Yeah, you know what? I went along with it, right? So, uh, you know, <clears throat> we made it appear as if I was him, right? And I spoke my words, you know. And they were real nervous just with that. The the fact that the father could know all this made them really nervous. It did, right? How did the father know the entire procedure? You know, when you could say things like, okay, um, there seems to be an attorney who thinks that he's attorney. Right for the father, right? So, you know, like I'm saying, say, man, I don't understand how this attorney is my attorney, okay? Because he keeps saying he is, and y'all saying that he is, right? Because it's in y'all's record. But where is the order of appointment appointing him as attorney? When was this issued? What day was this? And who filed it? <laughs> right? Sometimes you might find out that it's the actual judge that files it himself, right? I don't know. Okay, I'm just saying things, you know. There's so many ways that we attacked 
on these attorneys, right, on how they could even could think that they were attorneys, right, in, involved in this case, when there was actual no real reason that they could actually say that they had that right, right? They couldn't even prove it that they were appointed, <laughs> and that's sad, right? I mean, there, there's there's so there's also ways that someone is appointed as attorney to you, right? Uh, you have to file an affidavit of indigence first, requesting the court, right, that you were indigent and that you would need and require an attorney, right? But did you file that? Because you know this father didn't, you know. And then there would be a hearing, right? And then, of course, if at that hearing the judge, the court, right, saw that you were indigent, right. Then the court would appoint you an attorney. Then there would be an order granting, uh, um, well, an order of appointment of attorney. All right? And that's not what happened. Right? Any of that? Right? And then there's there's stat and these are statues in Texas, right? And I'm pretty sure every state has their own. All right? But anyways, so I helped I helped Lupe, you know, get rid of the attorney. Right, solely on his own, he did not want to be involved in the case, considering that we knew the fraud, you know, uh, of him even being there. <laughs> it was ridiculous, right? You know, they don't want no part of it. They don't. They realize the extent of 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 the law that they can be held to, and they don't want that. Okay, you want to be my attorney? Okay, you're going to accept all liability? Okay, I mean. I mean, put some pressure on them. Surely, if they want to fight for you, they sign the acceptance of liability just in case of any uh, uh, damages may have occurred to your rights, right? Yeah. And and if that is so, well, they have no problem giving you before they uh, are representing you in court to disclose their insurance, their self-insurance or bonding policy information, right? Yeah. Right, because they they have some insurance, right? But they don't like to tell you, or they're supposed to. Okay. Okay. There has to be a way for them to accept liability, right? Right. You couldn't even prove that they are your attorney because you didn't give them a dollar, which is what the law says that a contract is. You know, started off as, right? You didn't pay them. You didn't give him a contract. You didn't set the terms of that contract. Look, hey man, I want you to be my attorney, okay? But really, I just want you to draft my documents. I know what to do, okay? I want to file a motion. I want an affidavit in support. I'll write that because that's my part, right? And I'll give that to you, okay? But but just draft the motion, right? And draft the order. That's all I want, okay? And if you can do those two things, you can be my attorney. And that, because I am very busy, right? And that's the contract, right? Then, all right, fine. You know, I guess you could hire an attorney and do that, you know, because sometimes people are very busy, okay? But, I, and, and if the terms to that contract aren't met, well, then you can put some, you know, whatever happens after that, right? Okay. <sighs> Payments not paid or whatever, half now, half later, I don't know, whatever you want to write in. And if the attorney agrees to it, well, then, you know what? I guess, you know? But anyways, so... 10 days, okay, we got to the adversary hearing, okay, which is the first hearing after the removal, okay, and, you know, he hit it perfect, I told him, man, focus on the removal, don't listen to all that nonsense that they're going to try to bring in the court, you focus on the removal, and that's what you, you focus on, okay, during that hearing, okay, they were real nervous too. Okay, I remember telling the father, "Okay, the first thing you're gonna tell the judge is you're gonna be like, when they after they do roll call, you're gonna be like, yes, I'm the father, right? Uh, my name is, you know, and I'm here to challenge the adversary hearing, <laughs> you know. And, and he did that, right? He spoke up before everybody, and he said that in his words, you know, we wanted to make it very clear." That the only reason that he was there was because he was challenging the adversary hearing. He was in representation of himself. Okay. 
they wanted an attorney okay the court wasn't going to even ask or question him right about any of that about an appointment of an attorney anymore because it was clear that the documents that he was filing that he understood the procedure right <laughs> well, at least I did it, <laughs> you know, but but I mean, you know, I was explaining to him on the way, you know, so I mean, yeah, whatever. So, you know what, um, it, it just for him to be at the adversary hearing was very nervous for them. Everybody was just like, <gasps> they had, as a matter of fact, he went up against two attorneys, right? Because they felt the need to have that. <laughs> and, okay, and, and he still won. I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm going to fast forward real quick. He got his little girl back. He did. Okay. Let me tell you. Okay. At the end of the hearing, they gave her back within two hours. All right. And I, I've been posting this on Facebook, and I've not shown any videos. Okay. Maybe one day I'll, I'll get the father to tell the story. Okay. But just for the, those people that keep saying that, that you know that I never win and all this and that. You know, it's not easy getting a parent to agree to participate on the video right because a lot of parents think that this is a private matter and i get that it is right for the most part right it's nobody's business right but you know what this is happening to a lot of people that i know that you know what it's better for me if i do this if i keep helping people right and keep helping people I, sometimes I feel like I'll never get anywhere. So, I thought that it was better that if I can help one person and show everyone what I did to help that person, well, then it would have a better effect. And I think it is. Right? Okay. So, in, let me go back. Okay. Three documents that we filed before we went to court. Okay. One was the notice of appearance as a pro se litigant. Okay. The second document was, let me see, what was that? Um, I know we filed a defendant's response and answer, right, uh, to their to their documents. Um, it's been a while, right? I, I'll put I'll put the documents in the description. It was three documents that I filed. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, notice um, that he wants to be served all documents right uh filed in his case by any filer because they just weren't f giving them the documents they weren't right they felt the need to just file it and expect that you know he's gonna get it i guess i don't know but we we wrote in a lot of stuff right i did right anyways so when he's there at the hearing right he focuses on the caseworker and he's like do you remember the day that you move my daughter. You want to talk about that, right? And I can't believe that she didn't want to answer. Like seriously, like the judge even told her, "Come on, come on now, answer the answer the man." Right? And she didn't know what to say, right? Because he said, well, "What was the reason why you removed my daughter?" And she testified that because she couldn't get a hold of him, right? And everyone, I was like, what? Right? Because, you know, that's when I finally understood that that was, that they hadn't really communicated. Right? They're supposed to get in touch. The law says that they're supposed to make contact with the mother and father prior to removal. Right? They must speak with you. With you right? Both, both the mother and father. She spoke with the mother but could not make contact with the father. Regardless if he, she couldn't, you know, <clears throat> she's supposed to, right, try with due diligence. That's what they're, you know, held by, bound to. She didn't, right? Instead, she removed the daughter, right? But, but didn't remove the daughter from him. Removed the daughter from the grandmother, right? It was later found out that in court right well i already knew this right but it was later found out through them that they had realized that they had removed the little girl from the wrong people who had her which was the grandmother right 
because the Texas state law says that, you know, a person that's in possession of a child for a period of six months or more, okay, <laughs> right, they are entitled, okay, they're entitled as withstanding, right, as guardian, okay, uh, they're the ones now in possession of the child, and they're the ones that can uh, be served now. If anything, if they're going to take the child away from anyone, it's going to be them. Right? So it, it, was, it, it was found out that they did this in the wrong manner. And all we did was put that on blast. You know? You know? Told them to say things like, did you know that my father was living, I mean, that my daughter was living with my mother? Did you know that? <laughs> no, I did not know that, right? I, w I want to say that their attorneys were even questioning that too, right? It, it was, it was apparent that they had done this the wrong way, right? And the father did a very good, good job, right? I remember he was trying to say things like, I didn't understand it, but it looked really cool. He was telling me, yeah, man, I even tried that thing or something about giving them notice. And, and I gave her a paper and it, it was like, uh, 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 you know, notice that, you know, um, of my rights and all this and that. And it, it was something that he had learned on his own, right, that I, I hadn't even spoke to him about. But it looked so cool because nobody knew what he was talking about. <laughs> but the way he said it, he was like, and, and, and ma'am, do you remember whenever I saw you uh, one day? And he's talking about um, some other so some other time, right? And he's like, "Do you remember whenever I told you that I'm giving you notice, <laughs> right?" And, and she's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Well, I gave you notice," <laughs> and you, you were, it was just so weird. It was just like it was funny to me. I was just laughing. I didn't because I really didn't understand what he was talking about. I didn't, you know, I couldn't even explain it to you, you know. But anyways, so. So let's fast forward. Now it's the prosecutor's turn, right? For, I mean, now it's the uh, the attorney for the mother's turn, right? Now get this, okay? So, so now he sees that you know the dad did kind of good performance, also, right? And and so he wants to do a better performance, of course, right? And, and that was good because it was, it was it was pretty cool, right? And so he he grabs a piece of paper, right, and from his his folder and he's like so uh miss low yeah, that was her her name caseworker so miss low um and and do you recall this document and do you remember this document that you signed is this the affidavit that you signed right and he goes like that right and he shows it to her and like, yes yeah, that, that's that's my affidavit i signed it yes okay okay well uh, on the first paragraph it says that the mother and father appear to be as skin and bones uh, you want to elaborate on that? <laughs> and why did you even write that? Hmm? I mean, because you know what? This is an affidavit, okay? It's and you swore this under the penalty of perjury, okay? And the court's not concerned about you know about your feelings of, of what you think that they look like, okay? The court's concerned about facts and relevant information and things like that, right? And 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 why did you even felt the need to even put that in there, right? Right? And then he goes, he, he goes and looks to the back. He's like, come here, sir. Stand up. Come here, here. And he goes to the father. Right? And he's, right? <laughs> he's in the front, right? The father. And, and he makes him stand up. Right? And he goes, do you see this man right here? Do you see him right here? Right? Does he appear to be as skinny bones to you? Right? And we'll loop here. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's a pretty big guy. <laughs> he's bigger than me. Right? He's tall. He's, he's bigger than me. Like, you know, he's not fat, but he's like, he's bigger than me. Right, bigger than the attorney. Right, he goes. Does he appear to be as skinny bones to you? <laughs> and the caseworker looks at him and goes, "Well, no." And then he goes, "Well, then you lied, <laughs> right? And you swore this under the penalty of perjury, and you signed it, right?" <laughs> and the caseworker is like, "Oh my God!" Right, she's nervous. She's in shock. And she's like, she wants to cry. I can't even tell if she is crying, right? But she's not saying anything. She's not saying anything because she's she's feeling it, right? You know, after that, the judge just 
you know, called for a recess and said, perhaps maybe you would like to um, go ahead and speak with the father about transferring conservatorship back to him. <laughs> go outside, right? And we didn't even go to the room, right? And and and, and I go, y'all got y'all understand? And they're all sitting down, right? It's the the grandma was didn't even think that you know she was gonna get a kid back. She didn't. She was so discouraged. She went to work. She goes, man, I'm Michael, why even? I'm just gonna go there and we're gonna lose a day of work. And I get that too, right? Because that's that's what real people with real jobs think like, right? And I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Today's gonna be a good day, and we're gonna call you, and you're gonna have to get off. Just watch. <laughs> so, so what happened is, you know, we're out in the hallway, right, and the grandmother's sister comes, right, instead, right, but she's there for her sister, and they think there that's grandma, right, and one of the attorney the mother's attorney comes out in the hallway and, and she says well um well cps uh, this is what they say right they said that you know what they're willing to give the little girl back right um but um they will still want the mother and father to participate in one year family-based services right <laughs> <laughs> the father and the mother are like right <laughs> right I mean they don't want to no I'm like no I'm like no she's wrong she's in the wrong and, and, and everybody saw that right she lied you know you know she did this in the wrong way of course not that they would have to be obligated to participate in one year no and i go you know what and this is where i step in and help motivate him to do the right thing i go you tell you tell them this okay you tell them that okay that if they don't give the little girl back immediately okay that the caseworker we're gonna throw her in jail okay and after that adversary hearing, if y'all continue to con to go, uh, go on with this, and we're going to finish it, and we're going to say everything that happened, okay? And at the end of the hearing, we're going to ask for sanctions, okay? And and we'll get them, okay? Just like what happened in the Michael and Melissa Bright case in Houston, okay? You you, you remember that, right? You, you want to know who helped them? <laughs> right? And the attorney was like, well, you, I mean, come on, sir. You know me. I mean, they have immunity. I mean, how can you get past that? And I'm like, yeah, that's right. They have, they, she had immunity the day she walked in here, okay? And the, when even up there in the stand, she had immunity, okay? But by the time that she got off the stand and it was proven that what she had did was in malice and in, good, in bad faith, and that everything that she had said was not in accordance with the law, okay? You and me both know that she's void of immunity, okay? So give the little girl back immediately or she goes to jail. And if she goes to jail, okay, the supervisor goes to jail because she approved the removal, okay? Do you see the domino effect that this is going to happen at the end of the day? Give her back, right? And his eyes opened up and he was like, oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> you see what I just did? How, what I figured out? Okay. Yes. This is what you need to do. Everybody. This is the kind of, you know, that needs to be on the news. Okay. But it wasn't. It wasn't because I tried something different. Right. Because I had saw at times that the parents that I had been helping after I left, they had gone right back to them. And they had taken them away again. And I was like, man, they don't want to let me show anyone how to, how to win. Right? So this is why I had told Lupe, don't, don't brag about this case. Don't tell anybody about this case. Right? You know, just go with God, man. Oh God, brother, take your little girl, you know, take her back home, you know, and she's, she's with y'all, 
you know? And the attorney comes back, right? And before he gets back, he goes, I go, you, you, you do realize? Right? And it was the father, the mother, uh, the grandmother, right? Uh, sister, right? And they're all sitting down, and I tell them, let me take a picture, guys, okay? Because I want y'all to remember the moment that y'all just realized y'all was getting y'all's little girl back. That was a happy moment, too. Right? Because for the first time, right, I, I knew how to win a case exactly the way I should have won my case. Just as fast. Okay? The first hearing that he had, he won. The adversary hearing. Okay? It wasn't even trial. <laughs> okay? The adversary hearing, okay, is the most important day of your life. If you just missed it, then your next shot is your trial. Unfortunately. Okay? But fortunately, you can call for it immediately. Okay? And just handle it the same way. Okay? Call it out. Okay? When they came back, the attorney, right, he goes, okay, I spoke to them, I spoke to them, and uh, I have a deal, okay, the, uh, um, the case, the case uh, worker in the CPS say that, you know what, um, the little girl comes back um, with the family, um, and all is well, and um, case, uh, case dismissed, <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's what I said in the first place, I'm like, <laughs> Thank you, sir. No. And, and and I remember at one point too, the attorney was like, "Man, he, 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 he I read your documents, right? He's done the father, not me. He goes, I read your documents, man. He was like, I like your work. I have to tell you, it's impressive. I like your style, man. <laughs> right? Because a lot of this, I was shooting back at the attorneys. I was showing the father they were doing. I was pointing the finger at them." <laughs> Right, you know, at the caseworker, at the you know they, you know, all put all that on on record. What's really happening? You know how 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 they can't do that, and and here's how you do it. You know and you know because they couldn't argue anything. Right. I'll go ahead and, and put the uh, documents in the description. Of course, I had to redact a lot of information so that I can comply and conform with the statutes of Texas. <sighs> I cannot post what they filed. Okay, I can only post what we filed, and with his permission, I redact the information, including her, his daughter's name. Um, but so that people can have an understanding of what it was that I had done, I went ahead and when I redact the information, I put, um, like, a John Doe, right, or Jane Doe, right, so that you can understood that person was who that was that I'm talking about, at least that, right, because if I just re redacted the information, you, you would get completely lost, so I went and done that, right, it took me a while, but I did, okay, anyways, so the, the court hearing's done, okay, I you do real I, I, I realize that I didn't have enough time to actually have the order appointing back the conservatorship back to the father. They Michael, come on, you forgot that? Well I'll tell you what, there was so much fraud that they had committed, okay? The judge didn't even care. The judge said go ahead and file the order, right? Uh, of appointment back to the father, right? And they expected us to do that. And we said, sure, we will. <laughs> but we never did. <laughs> we literally never did. Right? As a matter of fact, you know, I was kind of busy too, right? But I goes, but I, I, tell, I tell them, I don't even think they care. <laughs> right? That the CPS attorney ended up doing it for us. <laughs> oh, man. There's some good stuff. You know, but you know, this was in this was, when was this? This was a couple of years back when I helped Lupe. It was right after my baby mom had passed away. Right. But you know what, guys? 
this is what I enjoy doing. It really is, you know, that what I'm going through right now is a lot different. Now they have me in criminal court. But hold on, hold on. Before I start talking about that, okay, let me tell you a little bit more. A little cherry on top of, of Lupe's story. So, right, court's done. We're leaving, right? And within two hours, they give the little girl back, right? When we leave, right? when we leave the, the courthouse, I tell Lupe, how much money you got? He's like, what, bro, what do you, what, what do you need? Like, Not me, your daughter. He's like, man, I only have a few daughters, man. I, I, I don't know if, if I go, uh, look, man. You have to find a way. If you're not, if you can't do it, it's all. It's, it's okay. I got you covered. I had my food stamp card, <laughs> right? I go, but we gotta get your little girl a cake, even if it's a small little cake, right? It, it, I mean, because it's a welcome home, and you gotta put a welcome home, right? In her name, right? And you gotta give her a cake, man. And it's gotta be chocolate, <laughs> right? Right? Because you know what? That cake. That's better than anything. If you didn't have money, you know, for a present, and he really didn't. I didn't. You know, he pretty scrounged up the money to come get me. That's him. You got to get cake, man. Today's a good day. And he did. He got some cake. He went to the nearest bakery. You know, I was gonna buy it, but he was like, "No, I got, it, I got it." Somehow he found some money. Somebody cashed out me something, or. <clears throat> he got a cake and we took it home and you know he he was still nervous you know and so he sent his mom out to go pick up the little girl right grandma and grandma told me she was like man michael thank you thank you all this and that and i'm like hey no problem you know i'm just glad to help you know and and she tells me, and let me tell you this story. <laughs> she goes, when I get there, right, that she met at the main office, right, the exchange, right, she said that when they got off and it was a carload of people with the little girl, and that when they got off, even the little girl, that everybody got off with gifts and presents and clothes and toys and everybody had bags. And if you thought that was enough, okay, that after they unloaded everything that they were carrying, that they popped open the trunk, okay, and more gifts and clothes and toys, and the entire trunk was filled, and they gave it all to Lupus little girl, right, because they were sorry, <laughs> they don't want to be sued, I guess, I don't know, I told them, look, Lupus, just leave it alone, right, let them take it as... A lesson in life learned that they could have gone to jail, but they didn't. You know, and, and it worked, right? You know, it appeared as if the, that Luke had knew all these things, and they were real nervous that that he possibly could, you know, bring them to court, and he probably could, and he and we, I would have, for, you know, for him, you know, but we just wanted the little girl back. Doing that, right? Hopefully, it's changed, man. But anyways, you know what? <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close up this video because I'm gonna post this. Okay, I'm gonna talk about in my next video that I post. I'm gonna be telling you why I'm reopening my channel. This video, okay, is really meant so that y'all can know why I stopped posting on my channel. Okay. I didn't think that I was ever going to be able to do this again. Right. But then the pressure was on me. Right. Now they're putting me in court. Right. In, in criminal misdemeanor court. Right. Class B misdemeanor. I mean, I'm going to get into all that and tell you the charge and all that, you know, in my next video. Okay. And I'm going to be exposing everything that's happening to me. 
and perhaps maybe they didn't understand that I knew the process, right? I mean, can you imagine what's about to happen in Damon County, Texas? Okay. I told them stop, and they wouldn't listen. Okay, so well, I'm just tired of this. I am. Okay, for years and years and years. Okay, I've been traveling in the United States, helping others, not charging, not one dime. Okay, because I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing. If I could help someone else and continue doing that and that and again and again and again and again and again, I was going to learn hands-on experience. If you throw someone in the water, they're going to learn to swim, right? If I could put myself in a courthouse again and again and again and again and again, I would learn. And I did. I know the entire process. It's ridiculous that I could know all their jobs, okay? I'm not saying I know everything, okay? But I, I, I get a basic concept of what an attorney knows of how a court should go. I mean, I know how to move a court. <laughs> I did it with Lupe. Okay. And I understand their lingo. I do. There may be some things I don't know. But you know what? I'll figure it out. And I'll do it. Okay. But I know what works for me. Okay. And what works for me. Okay. See, David Street says... You challenge the jurisdiction and you expose the fraud. Okay, well, the uh, jurisdiction part, okay. You know what? It hasn't been working. Okay, maybe for others it has, but you know, exposing the fraud, definitely. Okay? Alright? The way I see it is fine. You want to bring me to court? You want, to, you want me to play this game? Alright? Let's do it. Okay? Let's do it. But everybody's accepting liability. I want everybody's bonding information, okay? I, I want everyone to understand the consequences, okay, of their actions, okay? Because you are not going to mess with my life, okay? So that's the way I see it now, okay? Okay, I don't do all this, you know, um, I'm not even going to go into that, okay? <clears throat> right, but, you know what? I want y'all to share, like, and subscribe, okay? Because it's going to get very interesting. Okay, I'm going to be showing a lot of details. I'm going to be showing a lot of videos, a lot of footage. Right? And you know the kind of content I bring, okay? So, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Alright? Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to go ahead and click that bell okay and subscribe also okay because you'll get all the notifications on all my latest videos all right guys thanks for tuning in you're watching dad versus cps